Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. All right. Um, well, let's let's see what God is trying to say to us today. First and foremost, happy Pentecost. Um, you'll notice um, that I'm wearing red. You will notice that I do not have a red stole, and that's because I work at a church that doesn't believe in wasting money on things, so I actually don't have a red set, um, a red set of vestments, but that's okay because um, we know what day it is, and we know what we're celebrating. Um, so really, um, Pentecost is the 50 days um, after Easter, and it's really, um, for many, many people, we think of it as the birthday of the church. Because this is when the disciples receive the Holy Spirit, when they receive their call to go out and to be the church that you and I um, have today. And it's that day that we remember that, when we um, memorialize that, when we too take on that mantle yet again and commit to that work um, that we were called to so long ago. Because you and I live in the time of the Holy Spirit. We, we live under that call um, to do those things. So... Let's talk a little bit about Pentecost, shall we? Um, I have a few things that we, we need to, to go through today, but I think what's beautiful in this story is that all people are called. Um, every single person, and every single person is called uniquely to them in a voice that they understand. And that is how God calls us. God calls us each uniquely as individuals, and God calls all all. Um, just as the disciples are all very different, the entire earth, the entire world is called um, to be together in this moment. And I've been struggling this week um, because we had yet another murder of a black man. Um, and I haven't said anything. Um, and it's not that I haven't been wrestling with it. I have. I just... I don't know what to say anymore. And I also know that um, posting things on Facebook and things like that is important um, to, to say where we stand on this, but it also is kind of an echo chamber. Um, because chances are we really only surround ourselves with people who agree with us or people who want to fight about things that we want to fight about too. And the other thing is uh, I don't know what to say anymore. Um, and neither of those things are an excuse. And as I was praying about it, I, I really likened it to when I was a child and even to this day on Good Friday um, when we do the Passion play and we all stand together and we, we cry out, crucify him, crucify him. And every year I just feel sick to my stomach and I would do anything to avoid that as a kid. I just hated that, that part. Um, and I still do. I still struggle with that. Um, because I think for many of us as Christians, we like to think we wouldn't have been part of that mob. We wouldn't have said that. We would have stood up and we would have said, this is wrong. No, we're on the side of Jesus. Don't do this. This is terrible. Um, but really, most of the disciples went, most of the followers of Jesus went one of two ways. One, um, they became part of that mob, part of that cry out of anger and um, crucify him, crucify him, or they hid, they ran, they said nothing at all. And like I said, I would like to think that I wouldn't be one of those. I would like to think that I would be standing with the other women at the feet of the cross every step of the way. But the reality is many of us struggle with that because chances are we would have gone one of those two ways. We would have been with the mob because we would have been scared not to say the things that we were expected to say or we would have just left um, we would have felt so overwhelmed and so sickened and afraid that we would have just disappeared um, and we wouldn't have been there and that's a hard truth for us to wrestle with and it's a hard truth for me to wrestle with 
Um, but I think it's one that we have to wrestle with. And in that wrestling, we come to Pentecost. Because Good Friday wasn't really all that long ago, was it? It wasn't. And yet here, these same people, these same people who denied, these same people who cried out things that were ugly and cruel, these same people who ran away are now charged to go forth and build a church. Peter, Peter is the rock, Petra. Peter denied that he even knew Jesus. He ran away. He was one of the cowards. He, Peter and I, we have a lot in common right now because we don't know what to say. We don't know what to say. We're exhausted and we're tired and, and we don't even know anymore. Um, and sometimes we're afraid that if we say something, it's going to be the wrong thing. And then what? Then we've screwed up and maybe we've ruined everything. And that is who Christ calls. These very people who screwed up, they did the wrong thing, they wrestled, and they didn't do the right thing. These are the very, very people that the church is built upon. People who screwed up, took a step back, said, yeah, I screwed up. They acknowledged their faults. And they said, I'm going to try again. That's you and that's me. That's all of us as humans. Because the work of anti-racism, and it has to be anti-racism. You don't get to be able to, like, I'm just not a racist. No, the work of anti-racism is to fight against. It is not to run away. It is not to deny. It is not to distract with other things. Because that puts us right back at Good Friday. No, anti-racism is standing at the base of the cross saying, this is wrong. This is wrong, and I will stand here, and I will yell that as loud as I possibly can, as painful and exhausting and frustrating as that is, I will stand here and I will say it. And I will take the risk that I am wrong. I will take the risk that I said it incorrectly. I will take the risk of discomfort. I will take the risk of anger. All those things because I know, I know it is wrong. And on Pentecost, we get a second chance. We get to acknowledge that we've done things, that we ran away, that we didn't do it the way that we should have done it. We get to try again because the Holy Spirit calls us anyway. The Holy Spirit calls me anyway, even though I'm afraid and I don't know the right things to say because, guys, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but I'm a middle-class white woman and I don't understand everything. And sometimes I say things that are incorrect or I, or insensitive, or things that I don't understand, because I don't understand. But that's not an excuse for me not to say anything at all. I have to say it anyway, and sometimes I have to be willing to stop and listen when I said the wrong thing, or I did the wrong thing, and be like, oof, yeah, I messed up. I messed up. Teach me how. Teach me how to understand. Teach me how to do it differently. Teach me how to be better. And I have to be willing to do that. And that's hard. That's hard for all of us because we don't want to be wrong. We don't want to screw up. We don't want to hurt anybody. But what we're doing isn't working. We are called to the work of anti-racism. We are called to the work of the unity of all peoples of the world because that's what Pentecost really is. It's the unity of every single person in every unique way. It does not make them all the same. You'll notice the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks, it speaks to each person in their own language in a way that they see and understand. They are all different. It does not call them to be the same. The Holy Spirit calls us to be who we are, where we are, and to preach the gospel in that place and in that way. And that's what you and I are called to do. And we're also called, when we screw it up, to take a step back, take a deep breath, apologize, seek a better way, seek to understand. And that means we listen. We listen to the stories that we don't understand. We listen to the experiences that we haven't had. We listen. We do not offer answers. We listen. And that is what you and I are called today. We're called today to listen and to speak, to speak truth, 
whenever we need to say it. And it is that way, that, that is how we build the church. Through honesty, through listening, through speaking to all. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.